So I have quite a bit of book mail. Like I could not stop crying at the end of this book. We're gonna have an Arthur moment today and we are going to get a library card. <gasps> it's wrapped, oh my God. This drink has me in a literal chokehold. Introverts, unite, okay? Yeah, that is the best thing in the entire world. No one can tell me otherwise. Oh my God, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Hello and welcome to the start of a brand new reading vlog. My name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be starting a brand new reading vlog and I'm so excited because the books that I want to read this week have been books that I've been wanting to read for a really, really long time. So the first book that I will be reading this week, hopefully, I don't know if I'll finish it, is Lonely Castle in the Mirror and this is by Mizuki Sujimura. This particular book is a translated work and it is a Japanese translated work and it apparently is following seven kids who one day go into mirrors and then they all appear at this magical castle. The next book is a book that I've actually slowly been making my way through and that is Cloud Atlas and this is by David Mitchell. This is considered an adult literary fiction. It's also considered very like genre blending and also bending. This is a book that's actually told basically in six different novellas and each novella has a different theme, uses different literary devices, uses different narrative styles and techniques and every single novella is kind of supposed to take place in a different timeline with different characters, but somehow all of these stories are supposed to connect. I'm halfway through this now, and let me tell you, it is interesting. The next novel, and I think the last novel that I wanna read this week is going to be Open Water, and this is by Caleb Azuma Nelson, and this is supposed to be a love story between two people, and it's about their struggles to want to be together despite having lots and lots of obstacles in their way and in their life. And then the final thing that I would like to try reading is Night Sky with Exit Wounds, and this is by Ocean Vong. This is a poetry collection, and I am very excited because I've heard such great things about Ocean Vong. I've heard amazing things about On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, and I cannot wait to get into this poetry collection. So those are all of the books that I am going to be trying to read this week. I think that's it for my intro though. Um, I will catch up with you a little bit later in the day. Bye. Hi guys. I actually have already finished a book, which I was not expecting, but I ended up reading Lonely Castle in the Mirror in basically a day. So Lonely Castle in the Mirror is following seven different kids and all of these kids have one thing in common and that is they have stopped kind of going to this specific school. And it's because all of them are experiencing some sort of bullying. So bullying is like a huge, huge theme in this book. And it's really heartbreaking to read about actually. The main protagonist as well as the main perspective is from a girl named Kokoro. And Kokoro really, really does not want to go back to school. She's actually frozen in fear because of this one particular bully who just sucks. And I'm not going to explain what happens because I think it's more impactful and heartbreaking when you read it for the first time. But she just cannot bring herself to go back to this school. She's invited basically to this magical castle where if she finds a key, she can get a wish. But whoever finds the key first out of all of these children and gets the wish, everyone else's memories kind of like vanish sort of of the castle and their time there. And the book is really just following what happens at this castle, but it also has a lot of commentary on why a lot of kids are stopping going to school and like the effects that bullying really has on children. And I thought it was handled really Really, really well. So a couple of things. First of all, the writing is absolutely beautiful, but I want you to know that this is a translated work. It was originally published in Japanese. And while I think the translator does a very good job, who is the translator? I feel like the translator, yeah, Philip Gabriel, while he does a very good job, I do feel like some things are a little bit lost in translation because some of the phrases in this book kind of felt a little bit outdated. It didn't really feel like kids who were middle school age would actually be talking like that. Also, there was a couple of times when things had to be explained. It kind of takes you a little bit out of the story because things don't directly translate just into English. So go into the story having a little bit of grace for the translator because I feel like he did a really, really great job. But I do feel like this would be a very difficult book to translate because not only are you translating it into English, you're also translating different idioms. So like you're trying to specifically come up with ways that like middle schoolers would talk and things like that. 
and it's, I just, I feel like it would add a level of difficulty. So some of it felt kind of stiff, but I don't think that was the translator's fault. And I also don't think that was the author's fault. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I would say, while the beginning of the story is really fast paced and super, super interesting because you're learning all about this magical new world, the world itself isn't as fantastical or exciting as a lot of other portal fantasy worlds that I've personally been exposed to and have read. I mean, I haven't been like exposed to them as in I've gone. That would be great. <laughs> Please let Wonderland know that I am available to come and have a tea party anytime they so desire to send me an invite. But like all of the worlds that I have read about have been a little bit more exciting. This book is, is a lot about how these children are all in their own worlds and shells and how difficult it is for them to break out of that. And a huge factor of this is miscommunication. Like that is a trope that I think is explored very, very well in this book. But if you were a person who does not like the miscommunication trope, meaning you don't like when a lot of problems stem because people aren't just discussing things and solving them, you might not vibe with this book quite as much because the author heavily relies on that as to a lot of conflict in the story. And in fact, once all of these kids get to this castle, they're really kind of just sitting around. They're not really exploring the castle very much. It's all just sort of about introspectiveness. They're all trying to figure out what they want to do and if they want to go back to school. And so a lot of it is like a very quiet, slow paced book which I personally really enjoyed. The ending was a five out of five stars. The ending had so many different impactful twists and incredible plot twists that I did not see coming that I thought were just incredible. And I could not stop crying because I felt like so many elements were just done so well in a way that moved me literally to tears. Like I could not stop crying at the end of this book. It was, it was embarrassing, okay? I truly was not expecting this book <clears throat> Whew, to make me cry um the end like i the ending is is five star the next update i have is on cloud atlas i have not finished this book yet i'm almost done with it i think i have about 50 pages left or so and i do have a lot of thoughts and feelings on this book that i really want to get into more when i have finished it but i'm kind of waiting until the ending happens to like fully delve into all of my thoughts and feelings so far i really really like quite a few of the themes in this book the themes so far that i am picking up on are anti-colonialism i love books that explore that theme i think it's a really, really important and timeless theme to explore and talk about. Um, but the other theme that I am really picking up from this is the importance of art and how art can kind of save people, which is one of my favorite themes as well. Some of my favorite books have actually explored this theme, like I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson and a couple other books as well. So I did really, really like that. But I will tell you, I, I actually feel like this book is really hard to get into. Every single one of the six novellas is told in a different perspective a different narration style, a different genre sort of, and a different, I guess, writing style and technique. And this is really showcasing uh, David Mitchell's versatility in being an author. So like kudos to him. However, there is literally a novella in here that is written in a different dialect. Like it's written almost in a different language. And I have to, I have to read this to you. So I'm just going to read straight from the book. It says, quiet as breezes, I crept in after him. Naples had ready jammed the open door for CNN light and so it didn't but not spelled didn't, it's spelled D-I-N-T. Didn't squeak none when I tripped in behind him from the dimly shadow shelves what the oldest icons on what on kept on I heard napes murmuring plans in conspiracies I just noted. it. So like literally parts of the book, you are trying to decipher what is happening and you kind of get the gist of it, but it's not enjoyable to read because everything is in made up language. There's almost virtually no spelling that you recognize from this dialect because the writing is so difficult and every single novella is so short. It's, it's hard to become invested in characters. It's hard to keep characters straight. Every single novella, except for the sixth one, actually ends exactly exactly halfway through, you're reading half of the novella and then you go on to the next novella. And then by the time you read the other half of the novella, you don't remember what's happening because you've already read six other novellas. So it's, it's honestly really confusing. The concept 
deserves a five out of five stars. And I love how inventive and creative it is. I think that is so important in the literary world to constantly be coming up with new literary devices and new ways to explore ideas. And the creativity is wonderful, but it does at times read pretentious. Okay, so that is my update for now. I think I'm actually going to be editing for the rest of today. So I probably won't talk to you until a couple of days. So I will just chat with you then. Bye. Hi guys, today is like going to be the most fun day ever. Number one, it's sunny, which I have found in my later years in life, I kind of need. I thought I could be a gloomy like when I was younger. No, it turns out when it rains, I'm very happy for the first 12 hours. And then when it just like stays dark and gray, I too turn dark and gray and like not in a sexy moment in like a, is she okay moment. Today is gonna be really, really fun though because in addition to it being sunny, we are also going to go to the library. I actually have never been to the Chattanooga Public Library. It's huge. I've actually made bookish like goals for the year. I haven't discussed them on my channel or anything, but one of my goals this year is to use the library more. I am so passionate about the library. I don't talk about it often on my channel, but like one of the reasons why I decided to get my master's in library science is because you almost don't don't realize the impact of a library until you have the privilege of working at one or regularly attending one. Libraries are so necessary for communities. It's not just about books, it's often about like free programs and a lot of free classes for adults, for kids, for teenagers, and they provide so many free resources. I know it depends on the budget, it depends on the size of the city, it depends on the library, it depends on, on the library's focus. Like there are so many different things, but but I love libraries so much and I really, really wanna use mine more. So the best way to use a library is obviously to get a library card. We're gonna have an Arthur moment today and we are going to get a library card. And then I think also I kind of want to go to a nice little cafe and read some of the books that I'm reading just like out of the house, you know, to get some fresh air. Before we go to the library, I have to tell you that I am obsessed with a drink and this drink has me in a literal chokehold. I don't go to Starbucks anymore because I just prefer making iced coffee from my house. So I thought I would make it for you. This is my second iced coffee for the day. So I literally just rinsed it and then put new ice in it but like it already had coffee in it. It's so basic. It's not like an instructional thing, but I just thought I'd show you what I'm what I do. So I like this. You can get this from anywhere. I get it from Publix. I get the Starbucks iced coffee unsweetened medium roast. So I've got some ice in there and I just fill up the standard iced coffee from Starbucks. Some people don't like Starbucks, but I used to work there. I used to be a barista like back when I was going to school and I happen to really like it. So it's about to here of just solid iced coffee. Um, then I take this, which is oat lay oat milk. I just, I really like the way this stuff tastes. I actually find it tastes better in my opinion than regular milk in a coffee. Like there's something about oat milk that just brings out the flavor of coffee better. And then I just take vanilla's um, Starbucks syrup. And I don't put a lot of this. I'm one of those weird people who I don't really like my coffee to be super sweet, unless it's a Frappuccino, in which case make it so sweet that you can barely drink it. I'm like, I'm one of the extremes, you know? So I just take this and I just put about that much, like a little splash, and then you mix everything together. Let's try it. Yeah, that is the best thing in the entire world. No one can tell me otherwise. Also, how cute is this mug? I got this from Target. They also, <laughs> it's just randomly next to me, but they also have this. I bought all of them. It keeps your drink like freezing cold forever. And I like the little like wooden thingamabobber, the lid. It's not a thingamabobber, it's a lid. Guys, look at how cute this tote is. I've been buying quite a few totes from like Etsy and a couple other places because I want to start taking them to pick up my library books. And I got this one from, was it Earthbound? Look at, they're like little kitty cats. They're so cute. It's really massive too. I'm gonna fold this up, put it in my tote and we can go and get our library cards. And I'm so excited. Okay, let's go. Seen so many. 
many times before But it's something else today I did end up getting a couple of books. Apparently, you can check up to, I think like a hundred books, which is crazy, every single time. I ended up getting three. The first one was this one, which is Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore. I think this will be really, really fun to read. The next one I got was One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus because I loved The Cousins by Karen M. McManus and so many people have said that this is super, super good. And then the last one was one that I've actually been seeing a lot of on Bookstagram and that is Cleopatra and Frankenstein. And this is an adult, I think literary fiction. And it seems like it's just following this couple's like life together um, but it was in it, like it looks so cool so I am very hungry I don't know what I want to eat but I'm just gonna pick up something to eat so I'm gonna pick something up go home chow down continue to read a little bit um, and that's my night I'll catch you later hello friends it is yet again another day in this vlog and today is very exciting because I'm finally going to be opening up all of the book mail that you guys have very very kindly sent to me <laughs> So I have quite a bit of book mail and I like to actually save it so that I can open everything and unbox it so that it kind of feels like I'm unboxing it with you guys. You know what I mean? I have it all next to me. We're gonna open it and then we're gonna make some pasta because I'm really hungry. So this note says, you are such a light and inspiration. I love watching your channel. Hope you have an amazing holiday season. From Winona underscore reads and from Samantha. Samantha, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. Um, I'm going to keep your note in the book. And the book is, So This Is Christmas, and this is by Tracy Anderson. Oh my gosh, look at how cute that cover is. Okay, so it says, Christmas, Oklahoma is a terrible place to celebrate Christmas. Luckily, it's the perfect place to fall in love. Oh, it sounds so cute. Samantha, thank you so, so much. I hope you had a lovely holiday season and a very, very Merry Christmas. And thank you so much for sending this to me. I can't wait to read this. I think I might actually save this for next Christmas. It sounds like the perfect snowy read though. Next. Okay. <gasps> it's wrapped. Oh my God. So it says, enjoy your gift. Saw this on your friend Gavin's channel and thought you might also enjoy reading this adventure. Happy spooky season from Carlene K. Carlene is one of my friends. She is also one of my subscribers. Carlene, I love seeing your comments. You are such a light yourself. So thank you. Ooh, okay. This says the 13th hour and this is by Quinn Sansa Spear. This looks so good. And it's a middle grade. You guys know how much I love my middle grades. This says for as long as Rosemary can remember, Aunt Jo has been peculiar but kind to her, telling her stories of fantasy worlds she loves to draw. So when Rosemary receives a pocket watch from Aunt Jo. She doesn't expect that her aunt's strange instructions will actually unlock a dream world full of magic. You guys, how come I've never heard of 
this before. This sounds so freaking good. And you look at the cover, oh my gosh. And I will be reading this in the next month and thinking of you. Thank you again so much. Next up, we've got this one. This one's kind of big. So the next one is Steve Barry's The Malta Exchange, a novel. This sounds so much like The Da Vinci Code and I loved The Da Vinci Code. It sounds so intriguing. Lexi, I know this book is slightly out of what I see on your channel, but I enjoyed it and thought you might too. Besides, what is life if we don't branch out a little? I hope you enjoyed the Malta Exchange as much as I did, plus there are murders involved. Love that. Also enjoy the little end flag sticker as well. I think this is from the college that this person is from, which is so cool. Blessings, Stan, Steve. That's so incredibly thoughtful, thank you. And actually, um, it kind of is reminding me a little bit of the Da Vinci Code, and I really enjoy the Da Vinci Code, so I'm so honored that you would send this to me, and I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Next stop. So the note, ah, oh, this is from Christine. <laughs> Christine, you're so sweet. It says, Merry Christmas from Christine. Um, and then this one says, thought you might have fun with this. Merry Christmas from Christine. Christine, you are such a good friend. Uh, thank you so much. This is so sweet. Merry late Christmas to you, my friend. This is so precious. Okay, so there's this little quill pen, which is so beautiful. And then it comes with this really gorgeous notebook. Oh my God, that's so thoughtful. And it's be it's so beautiful. I will absolutely keep this. I will absolutely write in this. This is so thoughtful. It is so gorgeous. Your taste is just impeccable, my friend. Thank you so much. She also sent me this. I think I open it this way. Oh my gosh, no. I can see from the box. I think I know what this is. This is so cool. She sent me a coffee sampler. Oh my gosh. Christine, this is like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing. You guys, I am never not without my coffee. This girl knows me, oh my gosh. Christine, I wish I could give you the biggest hug. You're so sweet and you're so thoughtful. You're such a good friend. Thank you so much. Next up, oh my gosh, there's so many things in here. Lexi, this is my first time sending you gifts. I just wanted to say your YouTube channel always brings a smile to my face when I've had a rough day. There are three books and another Christmas decoration to add to your Christmas decorations. Thank you for being you and having the kindest heart. Yes, I hope you don't have these three books. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, you guys. If you ever send me a book that I've already had, it's the thought that counts. Um, can I just say too, when I read things like this, it always makes me really emotional because I feel like you guys are always saying the nicest things about me brightening up your day, but the truth is you brighten up my day. Whatever I'm going through in life and in my personal life, no matter what is happening, all I have to do is look at my comments and talk to you guys and everything is better. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Literally everything in my life is better because of you. So thank you so much. This, by the way, is from Margie. Margie, thank you so much for thinking of me. Thank you so much for sending this to me. It means the world to me. Oh, how cute! I, of course, will keep this on my bookshelf, 100%. Um, I'll put it out every single holiday. It's so precious. You guys, look at how cute this is. Ooh, I have never seen this book. It says the forget-me-not summer. Is this a middle grade? This is so cute. So it says sisters Marigold, Ziana, and Lily Silver can't wait for summer even though it's warm all year long in LA. But when their parents announce they're sending these California girls to their Aunt Sunny's house on Cape Cod for several weeks, it's a complete disaster. This will definitely be on my summer TBR. Next. Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Do you know, I have seen this book everywhere. I've heard that this is such a good book. I've heard that this is like one of her best books and I have been so interested in it. So guess what? I will be reading this. Thank you so much, that's so sweet of you. And then next up we have Zoe Letting Go. Ooh, with a very intriguing cover. Zoe knows she doesn't belong in a hospital, so why is she in one? Ooh, intriguing. Twin Birch isn't just any hospital, it's a strange mansion populated by unnerving staff and glassy-eyed patients, oh my god. I'm in, I'm so interested. Thank you so much for sending this to me. This gift was so thoughtful. Um, Thank you so much, Margie. I hope you are having a lovely day. I'm so sorry for opening these a little bit late. I wish I could give you a big hug. Thank you so much. Next. 
Hi Lexi, not sure if you have this, but I saw it and I thought of you because of your love of foxes and spooky things. I adore your channel and your bright spirit. Your excitement and positivity are infectious and bring so much joy from Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. That's so sweet of you. Scary stories for young foxes. Oh my God. So I do actually have a version of this copy, but mine, it does not have a Newbery Honor Award book sticker. So I'm keeping yours. Thank you so much, Brooke. You are just the sweetest and I really appreciate it. Thank you. And next up, <gasps> it's wrapped. So this one says, hi Lexi, I love your channel so much that you've inspired me to create my own. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. It says this book is a debut self-published novel by a local author that left me captivated. Hope you enjoy it. From Caitlin. Okay, and the self-published book is called The Trip Point, a novel, and it looks very, very intriguing. Can the dead help her decode the secrets of the past? And you know, you know I'm already excited and intrigued because I love anything involving a ghost story. We're almost done, we've got two left. <gasps> oh my gosh! You know what's funny is I actually wanted to go out and rebuy this version of The Hobbit because I have this really, really beautiful edition of The Hobbit from one of my subscribers, but I wanted to annotate a different version of that because that one's like too nice to write in and my original copy looked like this, and so I've been wanting to buy this for such a long time. How did you know? So this is from Katie Foster. It says, wow, one of the last things on your wish list. Oh, did I have it on my wish list? That, that would make sense, because I really wanted to buy it. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of your content. I've had a rough year, oh, and you make me feel better and always wanting to read more. You are so loved. I hope you enjoy this from Katie. Katie, thank you so much. That means the world to me. You guys, the the books are so lovely, but just like your your words and your cards, they mean so much to me. You don't even know. Last one. This one's wrapped. Hi Lexi, love your channel as a fellow introvert. Yes, introverts unite, okay? As a fellow introvert, I'm inspired by your ability to shoot these videos. Oh, thank you. And I love your enthusiasm and genuine demeanor from Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany, that's so sweet of you. Okay, and the last thing. Oh my God, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She got me a personal library kit. You got, Look at what it comes with, look at what it comes with. This is so neat. We've got a date stamp, a stamp pad, 20 checkout cards, 20 self-adhesive pockets, and a, I didn't even know they made stuff like this. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And I think that that is it for everything. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has sent me something. I love all of you so very much. And also, thank you so much to everyone who comments, who leaves really, really sweet, beautiful things for me to read. You mean more to me than I can ever express. You don't even know. Well, that was like one of the best ways to start my day. It's kind of more in the afternoon now and I'm starving. So I figured what we could do is make some pasta, eat it outside together, and then I'm gonna kind of continue to read my last two books. I'm halfway through both books. So I'm halfway through Open Water and I'm also halfway through my poetry collection. So I'm hoping that after today, I will actually be finished with both of them and then I can kind of wrap up the vlog and give you all of my thoughts on all of the books and I'm really, really excited about it. I think that's it though. So uh, without further ado, let's go make some pasta. <laughs> what it is behind me, I think in next week's vlog. But I just realized that I actually never closed out this vlog. So I really, really wanted to close it out 
right now. So I have actually finished Ocean Vong's poetry collection as well as Open Water, and I am here to share with you my thoughts on them. I loved them both so much. Ocean Vong's poetry is really beautiful. It focuses a lot on his heritage and on his culture, and then also it explores his sexuality later on in the collection as well. I love his writing style so much. I feel like if you're not as familiar with poetry, it might be a harder collection to kind of start with, but if you're really familiar with poetry, you're going to love it. And then for Open Water, I feel like this book actually reads a little bit like poetry. So I thought going into it that it was just a love story, but it's so much more than that. It is a story that focuses on racial tension and of racism and of microaggressions, but we're also exploring the theme of like that gray area when you are best friends with someone who you develop feelings for. Friendship is so powerful and finding like a really, really great best friend is so rare. And so both of these people become best friends with each other and they kind of don't want to mess that up because their friendship means so much to them, but they also are so into each other. And it's it was just really good. I felt like the tension was really good. I felt like their chemistry and their love story was beautiful. It was really heartbreaking and the language and the writing specifically that Caleb Azuma Nelson uses is just so gorgeous. Tonally, it's like a very sad book. So like if you're sad in general, you might not want to pick this up, but like I recommend this to everyone. I think it's an easy five out of five stars. I thought that the microaggressions that were depicted in here and the blatant racism was heartbreaking um but it was just like so well done and specifically Caleb Azuma Nelson also writes the entire story in second person which I think actually really puts you as the reader in the experience so that you feel the racism and also like the love even more. So instead of like first person where it's like I was doing this or third person where it was like he was doing this, it's said in second person, meaning you see the girl, you like the girl, and it just made it feel way more personal. At first it was a little jarring, but I love the style and I'm so glad that he went with that. I really loved it and I highly recommend it. I got really lucky in this vlog because I read Cloud Atlas, which was I think a three star. Then I had Lonely Castle, which I really loved and I think I gave like a high four star to. And then we have this one, which was Open Water, five out of five stars, and then Ocean Vongs, which I'd, I feel like it would be like a high three star, like a 3.5 or a four somewhere in there. But anyways, that's it for the vlog. Those are all of the books that I've read. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for sending in all of the book mail for those of you who did. And thank you so much for your lovely comments. I love you guys so very much. I hope you guys are doing wonderful. And if you've made it to this part of the video, please leave me an animal emoji, an animal emoji of your choice. I think that's it for now though, you guys. I love you so very much. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you very soon. Bye! Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time Met you